Hi, my name is Arlene King, souvenir to uh, private clients in the UK. Today, I'm at the Forbes residence, where I am the personal sommelier for Dean Forbes. We'll be serving the beautiful Marceau from Henry Fayville, 2004. It's 100% Chardonnay from Côte d'Avon. It's an excellent wine, 94 points out of 100. It's certainly ready to be drunk. Next edition, Cap Table Talks. You know, I always say I like to share these conversations that I'm privileged enough to have in my, you know, my own home with people who are in my phone book who I can call uh, friends. And I'm really excited about this conversation with two, I think, giants uh, in our community. You know, we've got Carl Loco. Uh, I call this guy 10 guys. Like, this is 10 guys Carl because he's like 10 different people in one, uh, one lifetime. But, you know, huge, huge friend, inspiration of mine. Now a VC. You know, founded his own VC, uh, Black Seed, and we're going to get into that and yeah. the backstory to that uh, in a little bit. And one of the best entrepreneurs uh, in the country, let alone in our community, recently exited Fanbytes in an amazing tens of millions of pounds deal. I'm going to narrow that value for you in a few uh, in a few in a few moments. But Timo Armour, good friend of mine, good to good What's to up? good to break bread. Timo, I want to start with you because, in many respects, I think what you're trying to accomplish at Black Seed, supporting underrepresented black entrepreneurs, we're trying to find the next. I mean, it's the next term. We're trying to find the next. <laughs> 100, we're trying to find the next. 100%. Teamers. And I know your, your story is well documented, but I think yeah. it's an important platform to help people understand where you are now. So, born in Hackney, went to live in Ghana for 10 years. Um, and then I came back here when I was like, yeah, 10 basically. And I lived on Oaken Road. So right. I just lived with my dad. When we met first time and I was like, Oaken. Oh, and you were like, what, Oaken? Okay. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> I was posted. Went to boarding school. Boarding school was when I kind of started my first proper company. Mm-hmm. Um, that had like a nice um, outcome. And I was like, oh, damn, this business thing is really what right. I want. There's to money to be made here, yeah, right? Come on. There's money to be made Yeah. Here. At 21 in uni, I went to Warwick doing computer science degree and then basically like started fanbytes and then that was just right market, right execution and we just run it up, run it up, run it up, zero to 75 people in five and a half years and then as you said, last year, sold the company. For a lot of us growing up in the environment we, yeah. we grew up in, few of us were very, very good and straight kids. There were a lot of us in the middle trying to just balance between satisfying our parents yeah. to not getting all the way engrossed into things that were going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I think you were kind of in that middle lane, yeah, the right? middle you, bit, And you yeah, were closer yeah. to a good kid than, yeah, a, than, yeah, a, than yeah. a bad yeah. kid, right? Yeah, in fact, I think people almost saw me the same way that they see, like, the golden boys who play football. Right. There were always those people who were just sick at ball, and you'd be like, do you know what? Leave Let's them. not involve... They're immune. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I was, my, one of, I was one of those. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mine was more like people saw I was smart. Intellect, right. So people kind of will always protect me. They would involve me in things. Right. And so like going to boarding school is definitely one of those things where I wanted to like physically get out of being in right. Road, right? right. Crash right. Hospital was like West Sussex, 16th century school. You all these long... It's as far from that right, from as you Peckham. can be. Right. But I needed mm. to almost like physically be out just so I could get my mind right, mm. understand there was a better level, and then from then on it was then just picked it was up. Crazy. Right, yeah. so we met, and then a, a few days after we met, I had somebody come and shadow me at work. And he said to me, oh, what are you doing tomorrow? I said, oh, I'm going to meet my friend uh, Carl Loco, he's an <laughs> investor. And he said, Carl Loco, and he showed me a picture, and I was like, yeah, that's Carl. He was like, wow, man, that, guy was, that guy was dangerous in school. <laughs> yeah, he was active. Like, I said, no, 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 like, it's the same guy, but yeah. you, you misunderstand. Like, yeah. I've, I've met him, I know him, he's a big, warm, like, a really on. nice guy. And he was like, yeah, he is now, but in school, like, this guy <laughs> was a tyrant. And we had this five-minute thing where I was going, no, it must be a different, yeah. a different person. <laughs> Because I hadn't done my research at that yeah, point. Yeah. I just knew the, the investor, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, fundraiser, yeah. the on. philanthropy. Come on. And I saw this energy and I was like, oh, like, I, I need to know this guy. And then when I heard all of this, I was like, oh, do you realize that people are talking about you? And he, and he, and he owned up, he fessed up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, true. But that, that was your 
origin, right? Which yeah. again is well versed, but like for the benefit of the rest of this. Yeah, I mean, you know, South London boy, um, Brixton, Mike's for the state. It was a tough gig. <laughs> it was a tough gig. And I, I take my hat off to anyone coming from that environment that navigated. Right. For me, it's not about um, the points in terms of, yeah, you X, X amount of people or Y, Y amount of people. It's not about that. It's about being able to meander, having the agility mm. to just survive there. Like, I take my hat off to anyone. Right. To be able to thrive there, mm. you know, whether that be thriving outside of the actual clutches mm. of the happenings or being within it and being able to create a certain level of immunity, you know, I respect it all. Mm -hmm. And my, um, what I opted to do was to thrive within it, mm -hmm. you know? So <clears throat> I started out like everyone, like hiding money in the socks, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. getting bullied profusely. Like, right. It was, I mean, anxiety was the name of the game just to go to a corner shop, to go to school. Right. You know, um, I was being mugged. You know, my mm. father, I remember he sparked out on a, um, a electric blue Apollo Plateau mountain bike. Right. And they, they took my bike. We ended up getting the bike back. My brother did actually. Right. Um, and I saw that he was able to get the bike back by having some audacity. He had no gang background. Right. He was born in Ghana, unlike me, I was born over here. Right. But he was just like, I'm not about to let that go because right. he's not getting another one. Right. I saw that and said, this is the only way. This so I just built my power. Right. I built my presence. And before you know it, I was one of the top boys on my estate. But I was very fortunate for my rehabilitation to come through actually one of my um, mate's mothers, who right. I refer to her as an auntie. Right. She's still more a mother than an auntie to me. An association you know, with the church. Right? And with the church, Ooh, I mean, yeah. faith was a big part of it. Yeah. You know, I mean, you have to go by what is unseen when every day all you're seeing is... Right, tragedy. You saw someone shoot someone. Yeah. And after they did it, they just came and carried... Like, Literally. Carried them playing football with them. I mean, with us. Right. Told me to pass them the ball. Right. Sometimes the outside mentality of people who haven't seen it, haven't been in it, mm. offering opinions on how yeah. those in it should navigate it, right? Yeah. If those people's children... Mm -hmm. observe something like that they're bringing in a, a SWAT team of Come experts on. to Come do on. you know PTSD and talk about and it. rehab and, talk and about counseling and talk and, about it right so there's like a, a yeah. team to help Listen. rehabilitate that child but when it happens to one of us it's yeah. like well yeah opt out don't don't pick up on that and I'm not advocating it or condoning it mm. but don't pick that up to defend yourself don't join a tribe to help yourself feel more straight or yeah. more safe yeah. You shouldn't do that. You should just be able to observe the tragedy, observe the tragedy, and still understand it's wrong and, and pattern of it. Like it, even as the good kid, right? You you had the same thing, like getting from home to the spa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was almost this sense in my mind that this was not what I deserved to be in, mm -hmm. and I think even from a young age, I think I spent a lot of time trying to mentally surround myself with just like some kind of positivity mm -hmm. right and i was trying to like force myself to like leave that was the reason i went to boarding school because you, you chose yeah you chose to yeah yeah school. how much do you guys think those experiences prepared you for some of the things that you're doing and achieving the audacity i had from the streets it's the exact same audacity right. today mm. Wait, yeah. it's something you said to me that that it's one of the most profound things uh, anybody said to me because I, I understood exactly what you were explaining, but I'd never framed it in the way that you mm. did. You know, when I'm about to go into a boardroom or I'm about to go and pitch for five, ten, mm -hmm. twenty million, how could I fear that when I've turned up at addresses to yep. go in, not knowing if I could come out alive or not? Hundred percent. Right? So, so this. This like is, what? Okay, this is mm, a cable. Like, what, am I going to get a no? <laughs> right. Like, like ooh. Like, ooh, <laughs> ooh. No. ooh. It's like a no. Like, <laughs> yeah. right. You know? You know, something that you said which um, struck me was like, the chasm is not that big. So many of my friends, they'll be like, oh, okay, I'm doing this. You're doing this. Like, there's such a big, big difference. Gap. I'm like, not really, bro. Right. Like... The only difference here is the people that we are applying those skills to. Right. Yeah. I'm grateful to those 
experiences, you know, mm. and it's, it's strange now as a parent <clears throat> to try to put these qualities into your child, mm. but you gain them in such a, like, abhorrent environment yeah. and ways yeah. it's, it's become a difficulty as a parent. Mm. But you've done, before becoming a VC, you, yeah. you did a lot of kind of charity um, yeah. work, right, and raised a lot of money mm -hmm. um, from a philanthropic um, perspective. Yeah. And I think you put those skills or even tested those skills yeah. in that run. And you were telling Absolutely. me some of the people and ways that you raised, yeah. raised that money. And yeah. I was like, like, how does this guy get from <laughs> there to, to there? But like, talk a little bit about, about that. Relationships can fast track, expedite, create immunity. It is the law of association. Mm -hmm. I just kept on doubling down. Meaningful right. relationship, right. depth of relationship, right. you know? And then I realized I was able to mobilize a lot more. And then I realized that people do more transactions with people they trust. Mm -hmm. So even if it's, it's transactional, it's still relational. Mm -hmm. So then that just extended to that point and being able to raise money, I just created friends in that room. And then I can use that rapport to be able to move certain things along. Uh, how did you meet your co-founder of, of Fanbytes? I'm, I met him at a networking event. We have very similar kind of backgrounds. He's from Ghana, I'm from Ghana, but also like family-wise, like we had very, very similar things. And the idea for fanbikes? I actually had a previous idea called Banzi, which was just a shocking idea. Basically, I just saw something happen in America and they were connecting audiences to bands through competitions. So we did that together for a few months and it just didn't work. And then I was like, oh, actually, do you know what? Like this influence opportunity is where the money is, basically. Mm -hmm. And then we pivoted our way into the influencer community, mm -hmm. influencer market, right time, 2017. And then boom, then we just saw it. But people wouldn't do that, right? We, we all talk to investors. We yeah. all talk to founders. We see businesses all the time, which we'll come to. But I don't see many founders you know, recalibrating in the way that you just described yeah, from yeah, an equity yeah. standpoint, yeah, like your journey. When we sold the company, <clears throat> I remember having dinner with Ambrose and I said, ain't it funny that it never ever crossed our mind that there was a world where we would not sell a company. There was no other option. Yeah. Like, Come on. This yeah. thing wasn't going to flop. <laughs> So the only other thing was to sell it, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? And so I think, to be honest, if that hadn't happened, if fan bites hadn't happened, if that influence opportunity hadn't been spotted, we would have done some other business right. and that would have also been successful. I do like the grit and the, the determination because on these journeys, they're difficult. And you mm. hear a moment where they are, they are difficult and you need someone else either punching with you or taking some of the, sh yeah, the yeah, shots, yeah, yeah. right? So I do, I do, um, like see it in that, in that, on that vector as well. But then I'm big on character. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. I'm yeah. big on like, <laughs> what choices will you make yeah. when I'm not there? Yeah. Like, mm. What will you do if you think I won't find out? The CFO I have that um, works with me now, when he first joined, I remember he was kind of looking for our numbers, and he came to me within like the first two weeks, and I think it was three million euros. Like he found a three million euro hole in our budget, right? And I cannot tell you how energizing that mm. was for me, that he showed up like in week two or three and he was like, listen, I need to talk to you like, because Yo. I've been going through this for a week and mm. I'm pretty sure it's a three million euro hole. I did the maths of your new in post. Yeah. I've interviewed you, the investors interviewed you. Yep. You're here to build this company up with me and you've got the comfort and confidence to come and say, say Yo, free me, yeah, 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 free. Yeah, and he doesn't know me well enough to yeah, know that I'm yeah, gonna. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't know yeah, that yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah. I may tell. Him, I may scold him for yeah, that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So when he did it, I was like, "This is my guy." For you, Carl, like, there's a reason why leading Black Sea, talking to people, being a leader mm -hmm. of the new school of investing is something that comes naturally because you're used to being a leader. You could have like not chosen Black Seed and just done like some other thing which required you to lead. And you just be like, well, yeah, cool, yeah. that's it. Your latest leadership endeavor is to start and build your own uh, VC firm. I actually didn't know that I'll be dedicating the next decade to 
allocation for black founders, mm -hmm. you know, inclusion in the entre um, entrepreneurial ecosystem. My now co-founder reached out to me during the first national lockdown. He was like, listen, I've pitched to over 150 VCs, taken part in 10 of the country's top accelerator programs and haven't been able to raise a penny. Wow. He's like, I've crunched the numbers and I'm a realist and ultimately I can do 150 more VCs and 10 more accelerator programs and remain penniless. So this is not around me being afraid of the scope of work, but more that it's just not working. You know, he himself is a quote unquote outlier, you know, worked for, for, from SpaceX to Tesla, you know, got patents, you know, right. um, and it just made sense, right. you know, so I was able to help get him some seed you know, by um, socialising it with my angel network, right, aka right. my mates, you <laughs> right, know, like, right. and then eventually after getting him seeded, actually, a week, it was the week's eve of George Floyd's online execution. Right. And yeah, I mean, it just went from Frank to Franca right. in terms of the conversations. The first engagement that was with a friend of yours who had a business and he needed, he needed funding. This is it. Right? This so is you it. helped him raise that this funding yeah. and then the light bulb came on that, the, the skills you had, the network yeah. you had, meant you could do that. I could do that in, again. In perpetuity. Rinse and repeat, right. you know. It's like how much of VC and uh, yeah. you know, tech investment capital goes to black folks? Yeah, I mean, if we really unpack it and speak to the cousins of VC, like the PEs and as well, I mean, the number's going to be a lot worse mm. than the one I'm about to recite, mm. you know. Um, but for the sake of, like, venture capital um, in the UK, only 0.24% was allocated to black founders in the last decade. 0.024% right. towards black women. Right. Zero point anything, yeah. like all day long, just means zero, zero. nothing. Yeah. Nothing yeah. is going there. Yeah. So as a result, we're getting no economic empowerment, yeah. no economic enablement. So then these ideas are dying on the vine. Yeah, having Black Seed, and there are, you know, there are others like Cornerstone and, and some of the others mm -hmm. who are, trying to address this problem of capital yeah. that goes to black founders mm -hmm. is so important in our community. And like, like you say, it's, it's the independence and economic enablement that is gonna allow us to change our situation over, over yeah, generations yeah. and that scale, because one or two of us dipping in and making money and making sure our family lines are good for a few generations, like, like it's good, it's good, it's yeah, helpful. It's great, but it's not but, enough. But it's not enough, yeah. right. It, I see some good pictures. I see good pictures which aren't for me. I see good pictures which I want to engage in and sometimes mm. I don't succeed. Great. But I see, I see many which are not good that are presented with the air that this is the, the iPhone. Right? Mm. Like, and I appreciate a bit of bravado <laughs> and audacity. I'm, I'm absolutely here. Yeah. But I'm looking at it again. I, I, I must have missed something because if this is what I think it is, there's no way you can feel as confident about it as you seem to. Yeah. Right? And I had one in particular, that, and I was telling this story the other day, one in particular that was pitched to me. On Saturday mornings, I normally look at two or three pictures. Mm. Saturday morning, 8 a.m., every, every single week. But it's my weekend, right? But I, I do it because it's pretty much the only time in the week I can carve out. So Saturday morning, 8 a.m., I get on, and this guy pitches. He starts, it's a 20-minute pitch, he starts with the first few minutes explaining that my team have done everything possible to prevent him from being able to pitch to me. Kind of like, well, it is a bit of the process because like you guys, there's yeah, hundred things coming and yeah. I've got a day job, I've got a family, so they're there to kind of help. So he's disappointed. Then he does his pitch. <laughs> then at the end of his pitch, I say to him, listen, I'm not mm -hmm. sure about this idea for these reasons. Mm -hmm. And even if this is a good idea that I don't understand sufficiently, I'm not the right guy because I don't have the experience. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I can't be helpful to you. And the thing for me and full family group is when we invest, we want to be helpful. Like we want to mm. lean in. Mm. We want to be mm. able to, mm. to kind of help this get to the next category. So even if it is a good idea, I won't be able to do mm. that. Therefore, it's not for me. This person I know, I think has kind of messed around in this space. Happy to connect you. This guy launches into a tirade about how I pretend I want to help black people, but I don't. How 
I don't know what I'm talking about, how if I'd have read his emails, which I clearly haven't, I would have had a better appreciation for the for the subject matter. Yeah. Then he becomes personal, he's like, you know, you're, <laughs> is it Uncle Sam or Uncle Tom? I never remember yeah, yeah, what the yeah. phrase is for like the black guy who's turned white. I'm a coconut too, which I hadn't heard for a long time. And he said, you know, I bet you don't even still cream your face, which was... <laughs> 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 that was a star still. <laughs> because when I came off the phone, I was like half laughing and half angry. I bet you don't even, in fact, I think what he said was, I bet you one of those guys wandering around Canary Wolf that doesn't even cream his face anymore. No. Like, oh, man. Yeah. A pitch deck is there to socialize, mm -hmm. essentially, what the proposition is and create enough stickiness and reception that when you're actually sat in front of the prospect, you can now translate, deliver, and expand on whatever it is there. With the pitch itself, like, I mean, there's this adage, re, um, investors don't read and readers don't invest. Mm -hmm. Like, too many words. Mm -hmm. Like, immediately, if I see a pitch deck, a pitch deck and it's word heavy, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, this is, it's, we're off to a bad start. Word. Just by it being word heavy. Be because one of the, the associations I think we make with that, I know I do, I don't know if you do, is this cannot be explained simply. Yeah. Um, th this volume of words uh -huh. is, is you telling me this idea yeah. cannot be explained simply, which yeah. is not good. One of the things I find myself saying, not only to black founders, just to, I guess, young founders in general, it's like, whatever business you start now does not have to be Google, right? And the odds are it right. is not going right. to be Google. The odds of your first or second or even third company being Google are so like vanishingly low, especially if you're starting off so young. So you can't be in that game of your first ever business, you're this 23 year old and you've spotted this thing right. which no one else has. no one else has. People who have decades of experience, no one has spotted it, but you're going to build this thing to uh, Billion dollar outcome. Yeah. I was speaking to this founder who does some like business in hair, and I was like, "Oh, you know what's the what's the end goal, right?" I said, "Okay, right. This is how we become a billion dollar company." I was like, instantly <laughs> turned off, <laughs> like instantly off, done. Um, and um, <laughs> that is actually something that I think is is a bit of a problem in our community. And to be honest. This is one of the reasons why I put out content like trying to share the play where people basically think, well, every business outcome has to be this like mm. hero outcome. Yeah. But your life can fundamentally change even if you do something and then you sell it for like, if you build something and you sell it for 5 million and you own 80% of it, that's 4 million. Your life changes. Yeah. Like, it's not as if... I either a pauper or I'm a billionaire. It's like, right, like right. what, bro? There's, you know, a, like, there's a huge you know, Like, there's a huge <laughs> delta in there. And so, in the pitch decks that I see, the ones that I do um, fund, are often the ones where I'm like, there is an 80% chance I will make 2x. Yeah. Mm. I'm completely fine with that. Right. If right. I give you 50 grand and in five years I get 100 grand, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I beat the stock market somehow, yeah. right? Yeah, Thank you, you yeah. know? Um, and I think trying to sell more certainty in your pitch there, trying to sell more certainty in your story, especially mm -hmm. if you're like early on, yeah. if it's your first business, because then your second business, your story can basically be in my last business, right. so I did on. this, Come on. right? So I'm now more certain that at right. least I can do that, right? right? You right. know? Right. So you're constantly just like selling certainty all the time, right. especially to people who, um, who have money, I think. A lot of people think that angel investors are just like reckless, reckless. Yeah. He's here, here's a 50, here's a 10, here's a 100 back. <laughs> like just vibes, you know, I'm an angel. <laughs> you know? Just vibes, you know, like I'm an angel, I'm here to yeah. save you. you know? And it's like, no, no, like we worked hard to make our money. Mm. Therefore, like we will work hard to keep our money, yeah. you know, yeah. right. and also to grow our money. So right. I think. This is why I was saying earlier the point about like not having an understanding of what good looks, looks like. Right. Like, yeah. like good is not Google or yeah. Facebook. Good is actually I put in whatever ten grand into you, and I know that you know maybe in three five years 
yes, I'll be ecstatic if that 10x is, but I'm also perfectly happy with knowing that, you know, maybe it, three, four X's. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's great. Especially for your first business. That's great. 100%. That's great. And I think the content you put out is so brilliant for doing that. It's so crisp, so pragmatic. Thank you. Yeah. It's so, do this. It, I did this, this, and this, so it works. Do just this, do that. this, yeah. and this. Just do, just do that, because people think too much. Yeah, yeah, people, yeah, yeah. People, yeah. people think too much. Fan Bites was an incredible, incredible outcome, and we didn't know each other. And, and when I saw that, and I saw, you know, sometimes we see the news and something bad has happened, and we yeah. all have that reaction of, please don't let me one of us, like, don't let me one <laughs> of us. Let me <laughs> <laughs> and I saw the fan bite story, and I had the reverse reaction. Yeah, I'm like, let me please one of us. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. It was. It was. <laughs> and, I, and I reached out on social yeah. media, I was like, come on. To an another person from our background, mm -hmm. and look, I'm happy when anybody succeeds, but we know yeah. how difficult it is to succeed Absolutely. coming from where we came from. Absolutely. And seeing you like achieve that at that scale in the manner that you did with the, the cleanliness in which yeah. you, you kind of did it, that like, made me feel, just made me feel good, oh, made me you. feel really, really good. And, and I don't mean this in a condescending way at all, I'm proud. Like, I'm proud of you. Like, and I haven't known you that long. <laughs> no, but no, I'm no, proud of you. And I, and I don't mean it's it in a, in a paternal no, no, sense. No, no, I mean, you, that's you. my not friend. Light. 100%. And he, and he killed it. No, same. And I'm like, I'm proud. No, I'm it's proud. inspiring. Thank you, thank we're, you. we're talking so much around certainty. But the crux of it is that when they see a black founder, they see uncertainty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why the numbers are the numbers. So. I told Tim, like, last time we sat down, it was actually um, at um, the dinner that you held here. I was like, it clicked for me. Mm. In a way, it's never clicked when I saw Tim. Mm. In terms of the black see the proposition. Right. Mm. You know, like in theory, we know it to be, but because no venture capital has been going in that direction, mm -hmm. that ultimately like. it's to now, you know, mm. showcase that. But to see like the living epistle that is yeah. fan bites and right. what you've created and generated, 100%. it's just in itself, it's like, look, boom, it, there it is. It gives black seed an uptick in its chance of being successful. Come right? on, yeah. And I was saying this the other day as well, that what people have to realise is you walk into that world, kind of what Carl was saying, you walk into that world, you build that company, you succeed. There's a set of investors now scrambling. There's a set of yeah. meetings. There's a set of war rooms <laughs> where people are going, who missed out on family? Yeah. 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 Which associate didn't call <laughs> on Timo? <laughs> when we pitched them five years ago, why didn't we get yeah, the man yeah. Like, Why didn't we get into That's that deal? There's a... And a set of people who probably knew of you early on, probably knew of the opportunity early on and deemed it as uncertain. 100%. Are now panicking to yeah. not miss yeah. the yeah, next yeah. team up. So the next scolded. one of you who walks in, you know, with the slightly dodgy trim that you've got. No? <laughs> <laughs> so the, next, the next one who walks in and, and looks like you and sounds like Come you on. or sounds like us. Come on. The, 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 brain, their brain, the brain is going to go... Hang on a second, I have to look through this because this could, I missed the last yeah. one. Do you, yeah. Do you know yeah. I mean? And that's what it does. Like, that's what, what you have done, yeah. has done for tens, if not hundreds, coming behind you. And yeah. those of us that will want to invest in more business yeah. managers, like, it can't be, Understood. it can't be underestimated. No, no. But, oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and the same here, man, like, um, um, the, that voyage takes courage. Mm. And you, like another friend I have, have, so many places to put your time and talent to serve self. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I mean, you've done it, right? You've yeah. raised tens of millions for other people. Mm -hmm. If you picked an endeavor of your own, you could raise that money to, 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 support, to support self. So the, the choice to put time, effort, that network, those resources, and the capital that can come mm -hmm. from those resources to solve this problem of yeah. many is to something I have an incredible level of admiration for. Listen, I, I consider myself lucky because, I mean, off camera, on camera, the question has been asked, why Black Seed, why now, all the rest of it. And all the answers I've provided is a part of the answer. But ultimately, I've been looking for a vehicle where the mercenary and the missionary <laughs> that is me can exist. Mm. You know, I've got to be honest, because I am a hell of a, I, I mean, I have, very few rivals when it comes to sales, mm. yeah? That being said, I can only sell what I believe in. Mm. That's my one, that's, that's my one nice pain thing. point. Mm. If I could sell what I didn't believe in, in terms of like <laughs> zeros, I'd be like, you know? Yeah. It'll be, you know, be nice. we'll all be okay, you know? But I don't know how to, I don't know how to channel 
the ferociousness that is me when it comes to selling a product I don't believe in. Mm. And the black community is one I believe in. Mm. We've all been in rooms where we're one of the only ones, if not the only one. And I think sometimes, and when we talk about it, we've found a way to just kind of not even let that come into the conversation. Mm. Right? And others would call that imposter syndrome. Do you guys even subscribe to that notion? You ever experienced anything like that? One at the front of my mind is, I, I was invited to a, actually no, I was a part of the team that was putting on the gala, yeah? And ultimately, this gala had, I mean, GDP of, I yeah. mean, yeah, like, it, it was- give us, this, give us the names. Give I us, mean, give us the, it was, to kind of give context, it was commissioned by AstraZeneca. Okay. It was at the banquet house you know, listed building, carousel seating. I mean, for me to be able to engage with the room, I had to have a tuxedo, of okay. which I didn't own a tuxedo, <laughs> couldn't afford a tuxedo, you know, couldn't even afford to rent a tuxedo. Right. So the rent, rental cost was actually incurred by the team I was working with. So okay. I had to um, have them rent me the tuxedo. Right. So I'm feeling already out of place, right. you know, and it's, uh, it's not tailored, you know, and I'm, I'm a scenario where right. it needs to be tailored. It's got to be bespoke, you know, I need OB on the label, you know, and it just wasn't. So I'm walking in now, um, feeling quite out of place. I've walked in and someone has actually, like I tried to uh, insert myself, you know, in a, a situation of which I knew a friendly face, you know, mm -hmm. there was one, but there was one character in that cluster that just clearly didn't want me there, you know, for whatever reason. I started to get an anxiety attack, like, I mm -hmm. mean, real, like, mid-conversation mm -hmm. in the room, and now, I mean, all to the point, I feel like faces changed, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, this is really intimidating. So I literally just darted out, mm -hmm. like, left the conversation, went through the back, found staff because <laughs> like, where the staff is they got similar narratives similar right. culture points right. similar right. you know pigmentation as well and some of them and i sat with them and i remember there was a chef um on his on um, break smoking a cigarette and i just like i leaned next to him and then he was just we were just talking and i called one of my mates from from my old life actually he's a part of my new life too but um we we've um We've, tra we've, we've traveled genres, right, yeah? Right, right. So I hit him up and I'm like, bro, I just come over here, but you know what? I feel like I need to cut, I can't be here. Mm. And he's like, this can't be the same locks. Mm. This don't make no sense. Mm. Like I've been asking you to leave and you never cooperated with me. Right, <laughs> like, right. I'm the one that you're putting in the arm. And I'm like, nah, 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 nah. Like, right. you know what I mean? So he was like, I understand you pulled your arm. Right. And he was like, plus ultimately, you know what God fearing men. Like we bow before God, we stand before anyone. Like, come on, like, well, right. rise up. Right. And I was like, whoa. Right. Kind of, I rose up and went to do it, but at no point did I feel a part of. Mm. No point did I feel like, quote unquote, worthy, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And throughout it, entirely back to front, I felt anxious, mm. you know? But I got it done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, that night I actually broke one of the records for that. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. In terms of fundraising records, right. I like obliterated. Right. right. Yeah. And it was with the imposter syndrome, syndrome the, tux the fear, never the tux I've never, yeah. all the awkwardness, yeah. and we still nailed it. Yeah. You ever had a team of like imposter syndrome? I remember once. This was probably yeah, in uh, fourth year or something. I was doing a talk, um, and it was I think it was about two thousand people, and. I was the only non-white person mm -hmm. and I was the one doing the talk, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Which is, and I remember for a split second before I go on stage, cause I didn't know, you know, like who would show up. I just knew they'd be from corporate marketing, etc. And then um, someone, some lady before me did a talk, like white lady, red hair, talking about something. And then I then just, went to check the crowd and I was like, oh, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I can't see anybody, it looks <laughs> like, okay, cool. And then for a brief second, I felt like, hmm. But then instantly there were two things that went um, through my head. The first one is, someone's got to be here, so mm. why not me, mm. you know? And I think that instant mentality change, mm. I was like, well, why not me? Like, I have shown the credentials. I have shown I'm the type of person to be here. Mm. So 
here I am. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and then the second thing was, I basically used it as an opportunity to show off. When you come into a room and you're the only one who's got this hair, who's mm. got this beard, mm. you're the only one who looks in a certain way. If you're good, mm -hmm. you are just seen as like, like so yeah, much better, right? Yeah. So you end up having it as a superpower where you're good is seen as great. Mm -hmm. And so when I go into that conference, that talk, and I do the talk and everyone is like, oh my God, that was great. Everyone remembers the black guy on stage, mm. yeah. right? <laughs> but when you have eight other white people on stage, it's like, oh yeah, there's this guy, I think he had a spot on his eyes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, people don't remember um, you as much than mm. if you are just so visually discerning. Yeah. I've always just been like, I'm here now, so we just have to be good. It, <laughs> like it, be good, it just yeah. has to work itself out. <laughs> you, you guys, I don't know how I got here either. Yeah. I don't know if I should be here. Or, uh, these all of the skills the people who should be here have. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any of those. But I'm here now, so I don't know. Like, we're just going to yeah. have to get on with it. Like, what is the point? You know, I, I never lose any calories. I, I self-evaluate to go, I need to be better. I need to develop. I'm not yeah. very good at that. I need to acquire that skill. I mm -hmm. need to get better at those things, of course. But I never sit there going, oh my God, I shouldn't be in this chair. Mm. Yeah. I may, I may even go, yeah, I shouldn't be in this chair. But I'm in it, so yeah, now we're all just going to have yeah. to deal with the fact. <laughs> now we play. Yeah. Now we're all going to deal with the now fact that, we're, that, yeah, that yeah, I'm yeah. here. You know, it's a, such a waste of. I view it. I don't mean it to be in a in a negative sense. I just don't think it's a good use of energy. Like, yeah, that's not spending your energy, reminding or telling yourself no. that you perhaps don't have everything yeah. that you need to. I think we have two superpowers, and we've all kind of touched on it, right? Some of those things in early years that people look at as traumas, which they are. People look at as difficult circumstances, challenging environments, which they all are. Yeah. If viewed in the right way, through the right lens, mm -hmm. become your superpower. Come and I, I say this often that, like I've sat in boardrooms as, as you both have had, and we also did touch on this earlier, where I'm looking across the table and I'm, and I'm thinking, I know what it's like to have nothing. Right? Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like to, to survive in a situation, environment that's different to this one. So if I lose and end up back there, I'm, I'll be okay. Come on. If you lose and end up back there, Come you're on. finished. Come right? on. Right? So who's in a stronger position in this? Yeah. Me or you? Like, Talk I, about it. I actually can't lose. I'd like to win. But if I lose, I'll be fine. If you lose, it could spell mm. disaster. And that, that is a strength. Like, that is a thing to be, you know, to, to put to use in those environments. I think that's one strength that we all share and some of our, our friends share. The other strength, which you're a big advocate of, which I know you're a big advocate of, and you do it a lot for your socials as well, is the power of the collective now, mm. right? And when we spend time together, like individually, we spend time together with, with a group that's broader than this group of very accomplished men with similar backgrounds to ours, you know, similar um, cultural background to ours as well. Mm -hmm. Now there's a power in the collective. Now I'm a phone call away from everybody in your phone book and I'm a phone yeah. call away from everybody in, in your phone book. And that that puts us now in a in a different 100%. in a different conversation. Hundred percent. So, uh, I love that and I appreciate you guys stopping by to have the to have the conversation. Good oh, to good. good to have you here. Break bread in a different environment to the one we did last time you guys went, went on till three in the morning. But <laughs> good to see you guys. I wanna see you keep winning. I know you're gonna and uh, yeah, thank you.